So an ordinary version of Windows can cost around $100 to $200 depending on whether you get the Home or Pro version. You know what? That sounds pretty reasonable. Ignoring the fact that pretty much every other major operating system is free. But what if you like throwing money in the trash in your free time and buy a $1,000 version of Windows, also known as Windows Server? Does that money buy you more performance? Well, we're about to find out. So on the left is the usual Windows 10 and on the right is the latest version of Windows Server, Windows Server 2019. Now, even though Windows 10 and Windows Server have a big price difference and a name difference, they're actually really similar under the hood. They have similar UIs, similar Windows kernels, but I'm pretty sure most people buy Windows Server for the server software that's preloaded with the operating system. I'm not a server person, but I'm pretty sure that's why people buy Windows Server, but that could play into performance with differently configured settings and different software. It could make a difference but as you can see Windows 10 just demolished Windows Server and I couldn't even finish the boot up test for Windows Server because it actually took a very long time. And sorry things are going by really fast but once again Windows 10 demolishes Windows Server in the login test which is really surprising considering that Windows Server took longer to boot. As tradition, I wanted to see how much storage was being used up by each of these OSs, and this was honestly pretty interesting because one has bloatware while the other has preloaded server software, and well, it looks like Windows Server 2019 takes the crown in this department, taking up 12 gigabytes less than Windows 10. Moving on to RAM management, here I had no idea what to expect to be honest, but trying to open up as many tabs as possible until 5GB of RAM were filled up in Google Chrome, Windows 10 wins by notable 5 tabs, but when I tested how much RAM was being used up by the system with nothing open, Windows Server took up 600 megabytes less than Windows 10. Remember, in this case, lower is actually better. I don't know what this means, but I'd still say I wouldn't buy Windows Server to preserve RAM. You might as well use that money to buy more RAM if you really cared. And here's CPU management, and honestly pretty boring if you ask me. Both OSs were averaging 1% CPU usage most of the time, so nothing really to report there. The most notable thing I should mention though is that the idle temperature of both machines were completely different. Windows 10 wins by an average of 6.5 degrees. My theory is that this is because servers are more reliant on CPUs, but man, that's a pretty large difference considering that these two machines are just sitting there not really doing anything. But what's even weirder was that the highest temperature of both under a stress test was exactly the same, 91 degrees. I'll just leave it to the viewers to figure out why the results were like this. And again, as usual, I wanted to open a bunch of programs on both of these and conduct a battery test. Same programs on both, unplugged at the exact same time, at least close to the exact same time. And going into this, I was pretty sure that Windows Server was going to win because I've noticed when I was playing around with it, it had many options disabled for the sake of performance and I think that correlates with battery life and sure enough, there you go. Now keeping in mind that the footage you see was sped up by 40 times, there was actually a very significant time difference between Windows Server and Windows 10. I'm not going to cut it because I want you all to really see what the difference is, but in terms of battery life, Windows Server without a doubt takes the crown here. Now is it $1000 worth of battery life? Uh, yeah, that's for you to decide, I'm not really gonna say anything there. Again, bearing in mind that was sped up footage, Windows Server just lost all of its battery life, and that was such a big lead compared to Windows 10. Now the Wi-Fi speed test was weird, like really weird, because Windows Server 2019 was utterly destroyed by Windows 10. Remember, I conducted 10 tests on both machines that took the highest scores of each, and Windows 10 has a 25 megabit per second lead over Windows Server in download speed. In upload speed, it wasn't as big of a lead, but still, this is really significant, a 15 megabit per second lead for Windows 10. Things aren't really looking good for Windows Server 2019. And here's audio editing, this was done in real time because audio editing is like really quick, at least in my case, and well, Windows Server wins by less than a second. They were honestly so close I wouldn't say it matters too much, but I edited these lightweight tests because you never know, there could be a more significant difference. Now here's an area where I was expecting more of a significant difference, and that's video editing. So using a program called VSDC Video Editor, I rendered a video editing project that was exactly the same on both of them. This footage is being sped up by 6 times, so do keep that in mind. Now. Which OS one? Well, Windows Server, but not like that matters because Windows 10 completes the test only seconds later. Usually in this test there's more of a significant difference, but this time that really wasn't the case, and I don't know why. I'm gonna start speeding things up because we're moving on to application opening starting with Windows settings. Now, did you see that delay with Windows Server? That was actually pretty noticeable, but Windows 10 does win here. Opening up a Word document on both, this always tends to take a really long time for some reason, no matter which operating system I use, but after a little bit of patience and waiting, we can see that Windows 10 does win once again, there you go. And Windows Server was still on the loading screen, but after a few seconds, it does fully load up that document. Same with PowerPoint, except this time it won't take a million years to load on both. Windows 10 once again does take the win here, 
and I'm starting to notice a trend where Windows 10 continuously wins, and Windows Server just has this weird delay every time I run it. And the last Office application we're testing is Excel 2016, and wouldn't you guess, Windows 10 wins, and Windows Server has this large delay. Windows Server has literally won none of the application opening tests so far, and I really don't know why, but things are looking really, really bad for Windows Server right now. Moving away from opening Office 2016 documents, I wanted to open a PDF file in Adobe Acrobat, and finally, Windows Server wins its first application opening test, finally coming in first and opening a PDF. So, round of applause for Windows Server. Round of applause. Last two applications I wanted to open were an audio and video file in Windows Media Player 11, starting with the video file. Both were pretty fast, but Windows 10 wins once again. At least Windows Server didn't have that weird delay like with the first four applications. And here's the audio file being opened in Windows Media Player 11. Let's give another round of applause to Windows Server for winning its second application opening test. Even though it wasn't that big of a lead. Alright, now let's open up a couple of websites, starting off with YouTube.com. Now, opening websites could be argued not to be really affected by operating system speed, but I still wanted to add it for the sake of curiosity. Anyways, Windows Server 2019 does win the first website loading test, YouTube.com. Next up is Apple.com, and surprisingly, both loaded up the entire web page up at the exact same time. Okay, there was a super tiny difference if you slowed it up, but seriously, I mean, come on, you literally saw it. It was pretty much exactly the same, and that's pretty surprising. Final website we're loading is a simple one, Google.com, and Windows 10 wins the final website, but only by a few milliseconds. So, in total, we had one win for Windows Server, one tie, and one marginal win for Windows 10. Honestly, if you ask me, website loading doesn't really matter no matter which OS you use between these two, but those were some interesting results. And here's the file transfer test where I moved a file from a USB flash drive to the computer itself. I was predicting that this would be the same or at least close to the same based on some results I got from previous tests and well, Windows Server 2019 wins the file transfer test and keeping in mind that this is sped up footage by 4 times, I was honestly expecting it to be closer but it was still close enough for me to say that there really isn't too much of a difference. Finally, before we get to the benchmarks, here's a virus scan test to see which OS scans the computer the quickest, and my predictions are honestly the same as the file transfer test, more or less the same, so unlike the file transfer test, this time Windows 10 wins the test, and the difference in speed was actually greater, so there's something to note there. And here are the benchmarks for people who like numbers, starting with Geekbench. The single core score was a win for Windows 10, but only by 2 points, so honestly, there really isn't much of a difference there. Even though Windows 10 won, I can't say it's way better than Windows Server. Multi-core performance in Geekbench was at least a little bit more exciting. Windows Server takes the win this time by a mere 14 points instead of 2. But still, I wouldn't say this is super amazing considering that Windows Server costs more than $1,000. Next was CPU-Z starting with single-threaded scores, pretty much the same story as the single-core performance in Geekbench, even though Windows Server won by, what, like 2.2 points or something, this difference doesn't really mean anything practicality-wise. And just like the Geekbench multi-core performance, in multi-threaded performance in CPU-Z, Windows Server did win by 16 points, and I'll say it again, even though Windows Server did outperform Windows 10 in this test, I still wouldn't say it's justifiable for its price. And the final benchmark I wanted to do was a 3D Mark benchmark. The focus of this one was to see how graphical performance compares on both of these operating systems, and we'll get a bit of CPU scores as well. So how much better does Windows Server perform in 3D Mark? Well, it actually did worse than Windows 10, and by a mere 50 points in the CPU category. So this isn't the 2 point or the 15 point difference like the two previous benchmarks, this is a way larger difference. And in GPU performance, Windows Server doesn't fare too well either, almost a 30 point lead for Windows 10. So yeah, talk about unexpected results. So what did this video tell you about Windows Server? Well, it basically tells you that it is definitely not meant for performance games. Of course, there were some areas where Windows Server did better, like in battery life, but for the most part, Windows Server 2019 either performed the same as or worse than Windows 10. So yeah, $1,000 does not buy you better performance, so sorry if you're upset about that, but at least you now know that Microsoft is giving you the best they can even with their $100 to $200 offering. So at least that's something you can be happy about. Anyways, that's just about it everyone. I'd really appreciate if you left a like, subscribe, or maybe even a comment on what your opinions on Windows Server are. That would help me out a lot. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all later.